What's up guys? I genuinely, genuinely missed you guys. I was hoping to create this video much sooner, but I was really busy this past week with my real work, so I didn't have time, but here we are. Last time we talked about how you could use QR codes with AI to make a much better experience for your own company or companies that you wanna work for or that you wanna suggest your work to. We're not quite done with that theme, we will still have a video coming up on this regarding image to image, as well as another technique to do this. But now we have something else to show you, and that's how to enhance the logos of your company or companies you work for or companies you would like to propose your work to. This is also a great utility, I think, for marketing. You can leverage it in your advantage to create promotional material for certain companies, advertising posters, or anything else that you can imagine. And we're gonna do that using ControlNet and the linear art model this time. So let's get into it. Now let's try to make one together. I know that all of you guys have your eyes fixed at this part right here, text image to 3D model. I just know it, but y'all are gonna have to wait just a tiny little bit till we finish this part, then I'll show you that. So back to our thing. Here we're gonna leave Euler A, sampling step 20, 512, 512, although we can play around with that. Next, we're going to control net, and this is where the magic happens. But first I must say that I think linear art is extremely underrated as a model for control net because it can be super powerful. Besides what we're gonna do now, what we're gonna do now is just one of the many examples you can use linear art for. We're going to drop an image. What you need here is a thin outline of your logo. Thicker outlines will work, but they'll give you completely different results. And I'm gonna show you a table of that in a second. But first, let's pick a thin outline Apple logo. Here we go to linear art. We're going to enable. We can't forget that part, even though that's easily forgettable. Control weight stays as it is. One starting control step stays zero, stays one. Everything else stays the same. The only thing we're gonna have to change here is resize and fill we're gonna to have to fill the contents of this apple. Now we're going to pick a model. We're going to leave it as rev animated for the moment. You can pick all kinds of different models. They'll give you some completely different results in some cases, depending on whether if you're looking for something more realistic, more cartoony, the world's your oyster. I mean, you, you could do literally anything depending on which model you use. Here we're gonna type something like, so I'm either using bird's eye view or satellite view because we want a top down view for this kind of effect, but obviously you can make different kinds of effects of an island in the middle of the ocean. Let's say lush island so we can make it a little greener. So now we run it. The difference between batch count and batch size, batch count is linear processing, so it takes one at a time. So if you put four in batch count, it's gonna do four, one after the other, whereas batch size is the amount it does at once. So you could say that batch size is parallel processing, whereas batch count is linear processing. So here's the result we got. As you can see, this is good enough. Obviously, you can make it much more detailed and all these things that you would usually do but as a result I think it's really cool. So here we're going to try satellite view of lush lakes surrounded by black rock. So these are the results we got. These are lakes here. Of course it all represents our Apple logo. This one is kind of cool. Looks like a dirt road and this one's also cool. Looks like lakes contained in this whatever this is. An apple, I guess. This one's super cool as well. Meteor impact hole here. This one's also super cool here. It looks like kinds of islands inside the giant lake with smaller lakes inside. It can be super creative and fun to do this. It can give a really cool impact to, to your brand and to your logo. So here we tried a bird's eye view of a clearing in the lush Amazon forest. This time we used this different logo and this is what we got. So as you see, it's super cool. It's like a clearing in the forest in the shape of the logo. Here's another type of clearing, which is cut out of the rocks and again you can send this to in paint you can add things removed depending on what you're looking for here we got some batman action with some volcanic eruption that looks like a batman logo if by some chance you don't have the linear art model downloaded already you should download that i'll leave it in the description and then you're ready to go and let your imagination run wild now this is what i was talking about earlier when it comes to the thickness of the outline it's going to give you different results based on that now about this text to 3D model. This is something you can download today and use in automatic 11.11. The reason I haven't made a dedicated video for that is because I have not had time to play around with it. So you can do prompt like usual or just add an image here, let's say that, and it'll create a full 3D model of it. It's still brand new, so not a lot of development has been done, but as you can imagine, this is going to get developed 
a lot more in time and it's going to get much easier to create things and to create much nicer things. So what are some things you can do with it? As you can remember a few videos ago, we did a video about desktop customization where we did icons. Well, you can use the same technique and the same model to create game assets as we've tried as well. Then you can load those game assets into image to 3D model and it'll create you 3D models of those game assets, which you can then use to do whatever you want with. You can take them to Blender, etc. The Blender crowd is gonna absolutely be all over this. So again, unfortunately, I haven't had time to play around with it too much because it would take a huge amount of time for me to test it out and to be able to create a dedicated video. Hopefully I'll be able to make a full video just dedicated to this soon enough. In the meantime, you have two options. Either you can use this extension and automatic 1111. I will leave everything in the description, of course, or you could use it directly on the Hugging Face site. I'm also going to leave a link to that, but keep in mind that it's not working very well on Hugging Face because way too many people are trying to use it at the same time, etc. So it's really annoying. If you do have a good GPU, I definitely recommend going straight to Automatic 11.11 and creating something locally for yourself. Now, the last thing I want to do is give a shout out to John Babrua of our community who's used the one click to animation or one click to deepfake technique that we used in this video to create his own deepfake using his own face. Well done, John. I hope I didn't butcher your name. Speaking of butchering names, we also have our friend Harmit Gabha. I hope I didn't butcher yours. Harmit has used the technique we learned in the last video to create QR codes to make his own. Well, well done, Hamid. And we're definitely not done with this topic. We'll have another video on the QR codes regarding the image to image, as well as a new technique to create them. Well, folks, that's all for what we got today, but fear not, we're coming back very soon with a lot more. I'll catch you guys later.